This is a quick video on how to use Microsoft Excel or any other spreadsheet to take a set of data, graph it, and then eventually use the concept of log log plots to find uh, the equation for a power function. So this is the example that follows from your previous tutorial. Um, and the note sheet that you have will have much of the stuff already on it. We're just going to pay attention to the process from how we go from a set of data to the relevant graphs. All right, so our hypothetical situation is we have some sort of wind generator, um, and we want to understand how the power output P varies with the wind speed V. So we've already collected some data. We formatted it on our um, spreadsheet, and now we want to look at um, a graph of one variable versus the other. So we're going to highlight the data. Always make sure that the X variable is on the left column and the, and the Y variable is on the right column. So we're going to go to Insert, which is already there, and I'm going to go to a scatter plot, and I'm going to press that one, and we see we have this. So I'm going to move this to a different sheet so it's easier to look at. So I'm going to go up into this white area, right click, and move chart, and I'm going to call it uh, P versus V in a new sheet and we're okay. Okay, so we see that we have a power function of some sort. Most likely quadratic, but we can't be, uh, we can't assume that's always going to be the case. It could be the 2.5, 3 power, 1.5 power. In other words, to be sure, we want to go back to our data sheet 1, and we want to determine what the power is of v based on the idea that power is proportional to v to some n power. Okay, to do that, based on the last lesson, we're going to plot the log of each variable. So we're going to do log of v in this column and log of p in this column. So to do logarithms in a spreadsheet, it's not too difficult. So I'm going to go to the column where I want to put my first point. I'm going to type in equals. That tells us we want a formula log, L-O-G, then I'm going to do a parenthesis, and I'm just going to highlight the cell that I want to do. So there's my first cell, put the other parentheses, press return, and there's my log. Does that make sense? The log of 10 is 1. Now, I don't have to type this in every time, so I'm going to show you two neat tricks. One you should already be familiar with. So I'm going to use this little square in, the, in this highlighted cell, and I'm going to fill down by click and drag and there I have the logs for each of the velocities. Now if I want to do the log of the power, I don't have to type in the equation again. I can still use the fill and fill to the right, and it will do the log of all these columns. And if you want to double check, if I highlight this cell, you'll see it says log of B4, and B4 is this. All right. So note you can have negative logs and we have positive logs. So the expectation is if the relationship between V and P is a power, then uh, when we plot these two variables, we should get a straight line. And the slope of that straight line should be our power of 10, or the power of, of the V. Okay, so let's go to insert. Again, we're going to do a scatter plot. And there's our scatter. Again, I'm going to move it to a different sheet. So move chart. And I'm going to call this log, log for short. Okay. So we see the line that we want. So the job, two things we need to find is the slope of this line and the y-intercept. So we can do that very easily. I'm going to right-click the data point. Any one, doesn't matter. All right, right-click. I'm going to add a trend line. Okay, and it's going to be linear. And then one last thing I want to check is I want to display equation on a chart. So it'll give me the slope and y-intercept. And there it is. So let me... Uh, I'm just going to increase the, let's see how I can do that. Oh, let me make the font big. Okay, so it's very visible. All right, so on your sheet, your note sheet, you should see that y is to the 2.9876x minus 4.23. So let me copy that. Let's see if I can do that easily here. Sure. Let me go to the sheet. I'd like to put that right here. There it is. All right, I'm just going to move it one over. Maybe not. Okay. So we can see then if y is the log of the velocity and x is the log of the power, then n is essentially 3. 
Okay, so we see that power varies by the cube of velocity uh, as opposed to what we might have originally thought as a square. Now the last number we want to get it, it to complete our equation is the value of k, the coefficient that goes in front of v cubed. So this number represents the y-intercept. If we go back to here, the y-intercept, which would be way down below this, is the log of power. Okay, I haven't labeled the axes here, but on your sheet it should say the log of power. So the value we have here is going to be a logarithm. So to get it into a non-logarithm, we just have to do the inverse log of the, that number. So we can do right here, and some arbitrary is going to be equals. And the anti-log is nothing more than 10 to that power. So I'm going to take 10 and raise it to this negative 4.3. I'm going to round off. and press enter, and so we get a very small number, basically 5 times 10 to the negative fifth. So our complete equation, which you can write on your note sheet, is essentially then that power p equals 5 times 10 to the negative fifth, there are units with that, but we won't worry about that right now, times velocity cubed. And that's a very useful equation. In fact, if you are, may have been wondering, when we go to our original graph, could we have done this by doing a trend line and doing a power fit? And the answer is yes, we could have. And we could display an equation on the chart. And sure enough, again, this is really tiny. Let's see if I can make it larger. Okay, there's our 5 times 10 negative fifth and x to the essentially 3 power. Again, y would be power and x would be wind speed. So you're wondering, well, why don't we do that to be begin with? Why don't we do log log? Because we want you to understand the process. On tests, you might be given this graph and you are expected to be able to interpret this equation and translate that in an equation. So you want to be able to go back and forth.